Hola, estudiantes. Welcome to Traits and Reproduction Lesson 3.6, Reproduction in Darwin's Bark Spiders. You're going to be using the reasoning tool today. You're going to be writing your argument today. You're going to be breeding spiders today. You're going to be reading an article today. There's all sorts of things you're going to do. So let's go ahead and get started with the warm up. Ooh, we have a letter from Dr. Satari. Hang on. So let's go ahead and jump into Amplify and take a look at it. Um, here we go. Two student researchers from Dr. Ada Satari, lead scientist at Bay Medical Company, subject gene versions. Our scientists have identified the gene versions for silk flexibility in the parents with their own spike spiders. <gasps> cool. We have submitted a diagram of the results for you to review. These genes are existing genes common in the spider species. We hope this information will help you with your research as you study why the spiders have different traits for Silk flexibility. Oh, check it out. We do. Gee, they could have made that a little bit bigger. You know what? Boom. Um, whatever. Uh, we do have a, uh, a new diagram here. And look, F1, F3, F1, F2. Cool. So we've got a lot of information here now um, about this spider family. Remember, it used to just be pictures of the spiders with their uh, traits underneath them, right? All right. Do you think the new evidence supports or refutes claim one? The offspring have mutations that affect their traits. Does this new evidence, knowing the gene versions of the parents, does that support or refute claim one that the offspring have mutations that affect their traits? Go ahead and write your response um, right there for your warm-up, and then uh, as soon as you're done with that, come on back to me. All right, we are about to jump into the reasoning tool here. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, Bay Medical Company is interested in breeding spiders that produce offspring with medium silk flexibility. Remember, we, we talked about that. We said that's our whole goal. We want to breed spiders with medium silk flexibility. They need to know why traits for silk flexibility, flexibility vary in this family's offspring. That was our whole task. Uh, claims one and three are two possible explanations for why the traits of self flexibility vary within a family of Darwin's barred spiders. We will decide which claim is best supported by the evidence. We already said it wasn't claim two, that they receive an equal amount of copies of their genes from uh, mommy spider and daddy spider. Uh, but now we're looking at claim one and claim three. Claim one we already talked a little bit about in our warm up. Um, even if even if you favor one claim, like if you think that. Nah, I definitely think it's claim three. Well, that's great, but it's not sufficient to just say that we, um, one claim is supported by the evidence. You need to explain why. Why is the claim supported by the evidence? And that's where the reasoning tool comes in. Reasoning is the process of explaining how evidence supports or refutes a claim. We come back to this every single unit, don't we? Where we focus on finding good evidence and using reasoning to support our claim. Guess what? We're, we're gonna do it in the next unit too, and, and the next one, and the next one. Because this is an important uh, skill to develop. Um, one that will go far beyond your scientific career, um, but will you, you'll, it'll be useful in all areas of your life. So let's practice this, and let's get good at this um, while we have the opportunity. Here's our reasoning tool right here. We've seen this before. Um, ours is gonna be a little bit easier to fill out, actually. We're gonna have some of those things filled in. To make convincing arguments, scientists must, must explain how particular evidence supports their claim. The reasoning tool will help you use reasoning like scientists do. This is the reasoning tool that you will complete to help you write an argument to support one of the remaining claims. Let's look at the different parts. And again, it's nice because they've already filled out like quite a bit for us here. In the column on the left, you can read the evidence that you'll be considering. In fact, let me go there. <laughs> Aha. They've already chosen the evidence for us. Okay, so if you're in activity two in lesson 3.6, and you scroll down to the bottom, this is our reasoning tool. This is what we're filling out. And it's, it's fantastic. They've already given us the evidence. We don't have to go through that process of deciding, uh, what's the evidence that I should use? It's right there. All right, what else? The claims are above the reasoning tool. You'll decide which claim each piece of evidence supports or refutes and record it in the last column. So uh, what, What? oh, here's the claims right here. And that you will just put it, put it in this box. 
and then put the or whichever one you think is the evidence supports or refutes, you're putting the claim in these boxes on the right. Okay, great, I'm done, right? No, 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 no. Ah, the middle column. In the middle column, you will record your thinking about each piece of evidence and why it supports or refutes the claim. So it's so important to be able to connect, okay, here's the evidence and here's why it supports my claim. Here's why it refutes this claim. Um, and so that is your reasoning tool. As you think through how the evidence relates to the claims, be sure to use the key concepts we figured out. Go back, refer to those. Uh, check out the metabolism study guide, uh, metabolism, traits and engineering study guide, traits and engineering, uh, traits and reproduction study guide um, that is in the Google Classroom that I've put there for you. Uh, and use those key concepts to help guide your thinking. So go ahead and uh, fill out the reasoning tool right now. And can't wait to hear what you come up with. Next, we are writing our argument. And again, it's nice because uh, in Amplify, they've already broken down a lot of the steps for us and, and laid it out in a nice, easy to follow uh, way. Now that you have organized your thinking about how the evidence supports claim three, by the way, it supports claim three, you will use your completed reasoning tool to write a short argument to Dr. Satari. Oh, we're gonna use the reasoning tool? Oh shoot, because I just kind of like blew through it and didn't really pay attention to it. Ah, oh, ah, oh, go back and do it because now we need to use it, okay? Um, your argument should convince Dr. Satari that the spider offspring have different traits because they inherited different combinations of genes from their parents. Um, so what we're saying is that the um, claim number one, that the spiders have mutations, we're saying, mm, no, it's, it, they don't have mutations. They've received a different combination of gene versions from their parents. All of the gene versions that the parents have, F1, F2, F3, we see those down here. They're in different combinations, but we still see those down here. Uh, there's no like F4 or F27, right? These are the same gene versions as the parents, or genes, genes as the parents. You should review your reasoning tool to organize your argument. In your argument, include the claim, evidence, and reasoning to support the claim. And let's go ahead and take a look at it in Amplify, activity number three. Ooh, look at that. Dear Dr. Satari, we have concluded that the spiders have different traits for silk flexibility because the offspring inherited different combinations of gene versions from their parents. The evidence supports this claim because, ah, and this is where you, again, use what you wrote in the reasoning tool uh, to write out your argument. All right. There we go. Um, I don't know that there's anything else I need to tell you for that other than, uh, yeah, good luck. Support that, support that claim. Tell me why that claim makes sense and use your reasoning and then come back to me. All right, activity four, this is kind of fun. More, more spiders, we're making more spiders in the sim. Um, next, we'll use the sim to determine which spiders produce the greatest number of offspring with the trait for medium silk flexibility. A lot of you have probably already experimented with this and tried to do this and tried different combinations of spiders to see what offspring were produced. And some of you already have a really good idea of which spiders you need to breed. So here's how you do it. Uh, pick the parents, choose parents to breed uh, to get the most offspring with medium silk flexibility, record the parents' gene versions and traits for silk flexibility. You're gonna do that here, yep, activity four. You're gonna do this uh, three times, at least, at least three times. So what are the gene versions of the parents? What are their traits for silk flexibility? What percentage of the offspring had the trait for medium silk flexibility? 0%, 25, 50, 75, or 100, okay? And then you're gonna do it again with a different set of parents. And then you're gonna do it again with a different set of parents. Um, even if you get like 100% you know, in your first round, well, try it again. Try it again with different parents. Um, and see what happens. It's good. Um, so yeah, run it multiple times, discuss, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then what, what do you recommend? Which, which spiders should they, should they breed? Okay. Do that. And let me just go ahead and continue explaining, um, the next parts of your lesson. Homework. You're going to read and annotate an article to learn if genes can affect running ability. Um, so in, part five of your lesson, activity five, 
Uh, the article's right there. You can click on it and open it and open a separate window. Uh, but please do read and annotate that. And the last thing, last thing, the self-assessment. Please do it this time. Um, I think in the past, I've there was one time I said don't do it. But no, I do want you to go through and I want you to really think about what you understand and uh, assess yourself. Assess yourself and see how you're doing and see what questions you still have, what things are not really making sense. Um, so that we can talk about those things. You can bring those questions to class. All right, after that, you're done. I'll see you next time.